Hi guys, I am now in Jam Residence, IOI Resort City. Let me show you the unit. So there's also a... And from the entrance, you come in. This is the kitchen area. Of course, you can still cover up to make it a closed kitchen. And then there is two set of kitchen cabinet. This side is for the cooking and the hop. And then this side is for the washing, preparing, cutting ingredients for your food. So there is wall and also base cabinet with drawers. And of course, with soft closing. These hedges, 45 degree hedges. Dual color cabinet and then the kitchen top with this kind of a quartz top. So here also is a H. Okay, there's a DV box over here. Then close, soft closing. So on this side, there will be a fridge <coughs> and also the washer. The yard area is supposed to be actually open up, but we add on this cover up window so that it will cover up. And then of course, maybe raining time, it will not splash in. This is towards the IOI city mall, um, Marriott, and of course the office towers over here. And then let's go inside. So come in here, there's no balcony. So you feel that your living room is very spacious. Of course, you can add more sofa based on your staying experience as well. TV cabinet, coffee table, sofa, a simple dining table and also the dining feature lighting is already set up. And then from this side, the bathroom too. Bedroom too. So every bedroom comes with the bed, wardrobe, ceiling fan, two lights to have a balance of the shadow. And of course, this, this setup I think is given by the developer. And of course, there's aircon as well. And then curtain. Of course, you can choose single layer or double layer curtains. Then over to this side will be the single room. Single bed, curtain, Aircon, ceiling fan, two lights. And then of course, over to this side is the built-in wardrobe. All right. Then over to the uh, master room. So the layout is the master room is when you come in, is on your left. The other two room is on your right. And then the bathroom is over there. So now we are going to this side. Turn in here is the master bedroom and the bathroom. A more spacious bathroom with a shower screen and a door to cover up compared to the other one is a shower screen we add on the simple towel hanger and then it already comes with all these things including the sink top all right this is the master bathroom and over to this side is the queen size bed and then of course you can still add on like feature wall to distinguish or differentiate your unit to stand up more among the rest of the units and then you already have this, the ceiling fan, two lights, aircon, and then over to this side, I will show you the wardrobe. So this is a bigger wardrobe, wider, longer wardrobe, curtain. And then for design purpose, you other than the feature wall, you can also add on your side table, your side lighting to make it more cozier, more fancy for the bedroom. All right. So this is the walkthrough for the jam unit. All right, when it comes to designing and renovating the unit, it really comes to the first thing, of course, your budget. The second thing, of course, is your purpose of the space, the unit, whether it's for own stay or for rental purpose. Assuming you have the budget for all different packages, like the basic, the partial, and the fully furnished, right? then it looks into your purpose. If you are for rental purpose, then you need to know who are your target tenant and what is the rental range are you looking at for the unit, how much the unit can fetch. So in order to do rental analysis, first thing, go to listing website to check all the similar layouts, similar size unit in the development. If there's not much listing available, right, then you choose the nearest similar product so if you are looking for a three bedroom see whether similar surroundings got any three bedroom 
and around the same age, around the same offerings. Then you take that as the benchmark. From there, you will know whether it's a 2000, 2005, 3000, 3005 or even higher or even lower. So then you will able to be, then you will be able to make a more accurate decision, right? After knowing your target tenant market who is probably expat or even affluent local or norm or mass market local or even students and then you know the tenant range whether you are doing room rental is around uh, 600 to 1000 2005 kind of range or you are doing mass market maybe 1005 to 3000 depending on the area of course because the area of um, Kinrara, Puchong, Bukit Jalil mass market is different from the mass market who is in Pramansara, Taman Tun, uh, Bukit Damansara, and so on, right? So you need to be able to differentiate and understand who are your target tenant market and then your rental range. Then, of course, how do you choose whether partial furnish or fully furnish? Of course, if you can, then you choose at least to differentiate from the other unit first. The first step, the first intention of renovating and designing the unit is to differentiate so that you can increase your first rental second thing the speed of your unit being rented out because, because it stands out among the other units right when it comes to marketing so supply versus demand nicer unit at the value for money pricing then it will be rented out first if i haven't buy the unit right when i do rental analysis how do i know whether it's worthwhile buying or not of course there's few criteria which i mentioned before in my cash flow video like. The first type of property, it gives you a positive cash flow. That means it's more than your installment, more than your maintenance fee and sinking fund. Of course, the second thing is that it's more than your installment, but still not able to cover your maintenance and sinking fund. Then the third one you can classify as it's not able to cover the installment anymore, but it's able to cover your interest portion because installment, there's two parts, principal repayment and also interest portion. So if you are covering the interest portion, that means you are taking the loan without need to pay for your interest because your rental is really cover that all right then the fourth thing the fourth type of cash flow is definitely you are not able to cover your interest portion as well if you know your cash flow already right then you will be able to choose the property that you want to buy or invest in more accurately and you can make an informed decision rental benchmarking right you really need to know need to do it before you even made a purchase or investment before you confirm buying that unit and not after you buy it. Because after you buy how, if it doesn't turn out as your preference cash flow, then can you actually terminate or even cancel the deal? Not sure, but it's best to do your homework first. That's why I always emphasize on this. But of course, if you already buy and then you wanted to go into um, budgeting, renovating and, and differentiating your units, right? Then you come from the project point of view. You see whether the project is a bare unit or already a partial furnished unit or even a fully furnished unit. Fully furnished, supply and demand, there's a lot of the similar unit. So the unit that rent at the lower pricing will be rented out first, right? Because it's competitive and then the supply and demand thing. So if it's come in a bare unit, make it fully furnished if you have the budget. But if you can't at that moment, just at, at least do the important stuff first. First, like the fixture that you need time. It will require hacking, drilling, installation, dusty kind of things. At least you do that first. And then the other part of the add-ons, right, can be added later if the tenant needed, right? Or the tenant can add themselves, at least a partial one. Don't rent it out bare unit because you are competing with the rest of the development. A few hundred units are competing with you. When you zoom down to the type of package, how much should I spend for partial furnish? How much should I spend for fully furnish? Then it comes to how you actually able to identify and recognize the value conversion. Like for example, would a plaster ceiling actually help you to rent out higher price or faster? Would uh, adding a bigger fridge, having a bigger built-in wardrobe, having a bigger mirror in the bathroom? So if that answer is yes, because you know your target market, then go ahead and do it because your unit will be different from other units and then it's appealing to your tenant. You know your tenant well, so that you add this kind of stuff, it will, it will be valuable for them so they don't mind pay you extra because after all, they, they are staying for a shorter term, maybe one year, two years, then they move out, right? So if you know your tenant well, right, you need to prepare your uni unit ready for viewing. It's just like you are tackling 
or you're proposing to your girlfriend or it's just like pitching your business to uh, an investor. If your pitching is complete and ready, the investor will see it's confident. If the unit is ready, if the unit is ready, right, it's convenient for the tenant, convenient for the owner. Once they see, they, they like it, they can convert on the spot or maybe one to two days after. If you just have the mindset that, oh, I make it very simple, very basic, and if the tenant wants it, I will add it. No, 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 it's a waste of time because when the tenant comes over, right, they might only have a few days to view the units. So the first impression matters a lot. Once the tenant spend time to visit the unit and they didn't confirm with you, chances is they will confirm with another unit already because your unit is not ready, not fully finished, not, didn't come with the design, uh, didn't come with the differentiation factor against other unit. Treating property investment indeed is a business. It's not a passive income whereby you buy and do nothing. You need to contribute in terms of you understand the business model, you know your buyer or rental, and then you prepare your product, which is your unit, to suit to their needs and their preference so that in exchange, they will give you rental. If you want a higher rental, then you provide more value to them. For example, you add on certain things like Wi-Fi, you add on maybe more furnishing, you add on more electrical appliances that they need, then that's value. So in exchange for the rental. So some people say, oh, I want to add on a lot of plaster ceiling to cover up some piping in my yard area. It's Yes, it's aesthetically, cosmetically nicer, but it doesn't convert to much value or maybe if it doesn't convert into rental as well, especially in the yard area because this is not the first impression area. So you need to identify or learn about what's the first impression area. Open the door, they look into the kitchen or the dining area or the living room. So that's the first impression area. So once that caught their eye, things come easier. So another thing that you want to add additional socket, la, additional point, so that it's more convenient. It looks like it's more convenient, but does it matter a lot to the, the tenant? Sometimes I even hear comments like, oh, I bought this unit because I like the ceiling height. Ceiling height, yes, it matters when it comes to living. It's a more spacious kind of feeling, more comfortable, but wood matters a lot in, and it contributes to the rental. So all these, to me is that you need to put the must have first and good to have priorities. So at least if you fulfill the must have, then you look into the good to have to compare products at, uh, at that time that when you're comparing project A, B, C, D, E, right? Must have is of course, you know that the, know the cash flow, you know the target tenant market, you know the potential growth of the area or the property, the property that has at least two types of rental strategy. It doesn't type to just one type of room rental, Airbnb. You can at least do the long-term rental, which the cash flow giving you is not too bad. And I want to repeat one more time, does LRT, MRT property or TOD properties, right? All the same. No, actually it's not the same because the demographics in the neighborhood is not the same. And when it comes to property investment, right? Do you really need 100% to have MRT or LRT? To me, after understanding so many different property and visiting so many properties, right, you really doesn't need to 100% have MRT LRT. Looking at Desa Park, looking at Monkera, Dutamas, Hatamas, looking at uh, Plaza Klana Jaya that I recently done a few videos, it matters on what type of product, whether the product meets the demand of the market of the target tenant. It's not about entirely, oh, I have LRT. So Putrajaya property, Putra Heights property, um, Sungai Bulu property, or even Kajang property, all are the same. No, different ten, different demographic, different income group, different target tenant, different rental that you can ask for. So of course, these are important consideration. Having and that MRT LRT actually brings value to the surrounding area to the neighborhood then yes and then of course this is part of the consideration not the entire picture don't just buy because of near to mrt near to lrt or even tod that's getting more and more projects which is near to mrt lrt but they are not the same they are not all one formula fits all if you buy a property in tddi with mrt is it important or not if buy a 
project in Chiras area, in Bukit Jalil area with LRT and MRT accessibility, is it important? It's a different consideration. So it's very detailed, it's very hard to say when you ask questions like, is this project good or not? Actually, it's also depending personally on your preference, your budget, uh, what is your purpose of buying the property for? Most of the time, I wouldn't be able to give you a one sentence or even a one reply to say that the pro project is good. Even if the project is good, like previously I mentioned before, Ajal Monkiara la, Society la, oh, but you do not know about the, uh, the rental strategy, how do you operate it optimally to maximize the rental amount and also the speed of renting out. It doesn't do good to you, but you are familiar with probably Klana Jaya like Panorama, like Sunway Serene, like Plaza, you're familiar, you know the target market. So if you buy a unit there, definitely you can run it better than someone who is not a specialist in that area. Some videos having this kind of sharing is because uh, I receive more and more inquiries about project A, is it good to buy? Project B, is it good to buy? And then, oh, I bought this project already. Project A, project B, project C. How much can my unit rent? whether it's studio, one plus one, two unit or three room. Hopefully through this kind of sharing, right, you are able to make a better informed decision before you buy and you are familiar with the rental value of the unit, whether it is Bangsa, Bangsa South, Monkera, Damansara, Banda Utama, or even uh, Gems Residence, Putrajaya, or even like USJ Subang area. Most important thing, you have done the homework before you buy and not after you buy, you check it the other agents and see how much it will fetch. Of course, agent, if you find a good one, they will be able to help you. It will do a very good favor to you and value to you, but it's not easy to find good agents nowadays. Lah. Actually, when I do the sharing, the outcome that I wanted to achieve is that at least next time when you ask me, maybe I will not receive questions like, uh, is this project A good or not? But at least you have done your uh, comparison, your research, your analysis, did, 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 did. and then of course your preferences and criteria, your loan capacity, right? And then you, you say, okay, what do you think about my analysis or what do you think about this project with my profile? That's very good. Of course, the next thing is that when it comes to rental, you already done the analysis like this property that I own is uh, VPing soon in Bangsa South. I see that the similar product is kind of layout partial furnish and fully furnish this is the rental what do you think i can do with the unit and then there's a lot of unit during the handover maybe 800 unit 900 unit 1000 unit you do not know what to how to differentiate your unit against the rest we can discuss in further but if you just ask like how much my unit can rent what's your renovation or design quotation that is a very general point of view it's not coming from um, analysis so that you can actually make you can actually position and differentiate your unit against the rest of the unit especially when it's VP with thousand plus units together I'm learning also day by day in property investment in renovation that design how to run the business manage people expectation customer and of course our internal team expectation hope you guys will be a better investor or even a better tenant better business owner better landlord Seeing from experience, buying a fully furnished unit is usually not doing any good to rental units because every unit looks the same. You don't have differentiation. Other people said uh, renting 2000, you are renting 2005. Of course, the 2000 will rent out first. Yeah, it's about supply and demand. If supply of the product, of the same product at lower price, definitely it gets rental out faster and will spoil the rental market in your projects. So at least the units comes with, let's say, aircon, kitchen cabinet, then it's okay, or water heater, the most, the maximum. Because when it comes to, comes with fully furnished, every furniture, every design of the unit looks the same, it's not doing good. So don't go into fully furnished unit projects or very, or projects that already done up like 70, 80% because it has lesser room for you to differentiate and improve the units to make your unit stand out and more competitive decision just purely on the package itself package is just a marketing strategy do not decide just purely on fully furnished unit as a combination of all the important factors and criterias do not just go because of very huge rebate 
A huge rebate doesn't really tell you the property is undervalued. You still need to benchmark it against the real transaction. Why are the age, why are the bricks uh, real transaction data and what's the pricing of the product against the similar products in that area. Look at the median price, then you will be able to make a better comparison. Big brands developer may not mean it is always the most value for money kind of investment. You need to look into multiple different areas and expect to be able to conclude, okay, after have looking to all this like developer track record, the product offering, the pricing, the target tenant, the rental, and so on and so on. Yes, I made a conclusion that this project A in where, where, where is suitable for my preference, more my budget, for my familiarity and my expertise in that area. Or I have a specialized team that can look after my unit in that area. So always make an informed decision, do analysis, understand your product. This is a business, not a passive income. There's a view from the facility floor, fifth floor. You can look at the IOI Resort, Marriott, and the IOI Office Towers, where the IOI City Mall is located over here. It's, it's quite hot now, but uh, let me show you the facilities as well. Come along and I'll show you the facilities. There is a function room over here. I think it's for events. Then this side, is to one of the pool and then there are also residential block over here and then over this side also there's another pool so this is one of the pool area i think this is for children's wading pool but it's very nice swimming pool wading pool so uh kids swimming pool playground area over here Then there is also a tennis court over here. Wow. It's a very spacious facility deck. Okay, let's go to the other side. There is a adults pool as well. Oh, very hot, but it's okay. I just just walk around and see how is Gems residence facilities. Impression walking around the facilities area definitely the project is not built to optimize all the number of units because you don't see they cram out with very high floors and a very very, very cramped kind of a squarish rectangulish design so that you can optimize more blocks more units the facilities is not even in a, a regular shapes also yeah even the pools so this is more like the quality of space in the, in, instead of the quantity or the volume of the space or number of units it will be more pleasant to walk during the morning or the evening but since i'm here why not show you guys around this part is cozy and then yeah walking towards this part is very nice you can watch your kids swimming or you can just take a dip during the afternoon so this is the adults pool there's also a slide over there maybe it's for kids very well equipped shower area and then Next to it is the swimming pool and jacuzzi area. Just do a 360 turn around slowly. So adults pool, the blocks, different blocks like this. I think four blocks over here and mid to low rise. That one is very low rise. Behind me, I think it's middle. There's no, not very high rise, around 20 plus over floors. Not built to actually optimize the highest number of units. And then, the facilities usually you will see me liking a lot of irregular shapes. I don't quite like that very squarish, rectangulish kind of uh, shapes because irregularity, right, like rounded kind of curve shapes, makes it more comfortable, pleasant, more relaxed kind of feel instead of uh, sharp edges or geometrical edges. Yeah, all right. That's how the facilities. I'm not sure where is the gym. Let me look. Where, let me find out where's the gym also. Moving, going over to the slide area and see how is it. So there's also a kids so playground over here, slides and other playgrounds. The barbecue area with the washing area and also the barbecue setup. It's quite breezy over here, windy, well ventilated at this level and then certain area is actually blocking the sun so it's more shaded 
more cooling over here to stand here compared to the other side so the facility deck is very comfortable comfortable like this to just walk around even it's actually it's noon around 12 something but just want to sh walk around and look thanks for coming along guys uh, this is Jam Residence Putrajaya just neighboring to this uh, I'll show you another time the IOI areas lah. so the IOI more city more not the Puchong one the IOI Putrajaya city more is over there hotel then golf course area is over here yeah so this is I think one my first Putrajaya property videos just this owner engages us to help her, help her to actually uh, furnish basic basic furnish for her unit and then just help her to rent it out so this is my first time visiting after doing the uh, renovation project for her another key point that I noticed in this facility other than irregular shapes cozy it has a lot of green elements greenery greenery landscaping put into so it makes it very pleasing for the eyes even though it's during the afternoon and then listening to the water, the sound of the water flowing at the near the pool is quite comfortable over here and you can see just now i was walking from there all the way so you see a lot of landscaping greeneries in this area I got to go to another property for site inspection, visit, and then later have a probably an uh, appointment for renovation, quotation, and project. So follow for more video like this. I will see you guys in the next one. Okay, bye bye. Yeah, I think that's all for this video. Just a short visit to Jam because I need to come over for a unit inspection after installing all the stuff for the owners so yeah this unit is available for rental as well so if any real estate negotiators would like to cobro yes we are open for cobro and if any direct tenant who view the video would like to uh, inquire and view the place feel free to contact me via my instagram follow for more video like this i will see you guys in the next one okay bye